Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. Brands must meet customer expectations for a personalized experience throughout the buyer's journey. One key opportunity to achieve this is by leveraging AI-based tools that offer relevant images and videos. These resources educate customers, manage their expectations, and ultimately drive higher conversion rates while reducing return rates. Today, we're going to talk about enhancing the e-commerce experience using personalization and generative AI. And to do this, we're going to talk about some statistics and some research that was recently done by Cloudinary. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Paul Thompson, Head of Technical Marketing at Cloudinary. Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this with you. Uh, Why don't we get started with you giving a little background on yourself as well as what Cloudinary does. Sure. Um, so I've been at Cloudinary about two years. I came here from uh, Akamai. Uh, I worked it, there for several years leading their tech and data marketing team. Prior to that, I had uh, about 10 years experience in advertising and interactive development, e-commerce, a lot of e-commerce development and uh, some work for major brands. So all in all, I've been in the development space for almost 20 years. And, you know, I, I really was drawn to Cloudinary as a you know company that really does excel in image and video delivery. For those of you who don't know Cloudinary, we are the we like to think of ourselves as the image and video platform for the web. We can help store, optimize, transform, and deliver images for you know major brands and small and medium sized businesses. Right now, I believe it's over a million developers using us across about ten thousand companies. And the chances are at least one of your favorite e-commerce, social media, or uh, news website is using Cloudinary to to deliver images and video. Our core product is programmable media, which uh, we'll touch on a bit today. It allows developers to transform and deliver images and videos at scale, typically with the help of some AI tools. Uh, We also have digital asset management capabilities with two products, assets, which are really for enterprises, and Nexus, which is our newest offering for small and medium-sized businesses. And again, the focus for all of our tools is really around automating um, the image and video lifecycle, a lot of times through through AI and, and ML and at scale. Great, great. So let's get started here by first talking about the role that images play in e-commerce and the customer experience. So starting with relevance, at a high level, you know what what effect do relevant images have in the e-commerce buyer's experience? So that's a good question. Um, I think it's you know the research shows that we um, and many of our customers that know that uh, visuals visual assets have really an outsized impact on the success of product listings. You know so studies have shown that. Having one photo in a product listing doubles the conversion rate, and then having two or more photos will double that conversion rate again. That was a study done by eBay Research Labs. And also, the higher the quality of the images and videos, the more likelihood that a product would be purchased. So essentially, having great media on your e-commerce site is, is table stakes at this point. Yeah, yeah. And so in addition to... The conversion rate, uh, you know, some research by Cloudinary showed 27% of customers have abandoned an item already in their cart because of poor image or video quality. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it, in addition to converting in the first place, there's, you know, there's potential cart abandonment. You know, what, what does this say to you about the importance of images? 
Well, I think it's it's you know the the customer wants to be assured that what they're seeing is what they get. You know, the old "what you see is what you get" saying, yeah. and effectively that you know the quality of images in video uh, is really vitally important, right? So. Typically, you'll start with a pristine image. You'll store that wherever, but you know you might compress it. Your team may compress it when it's being when it's being um, served to the user. But that user may not that may that compression may take something away from the images. So you really want to ensure that the image and the video that's being served is as high quality as possible. The flip side to that is, of course, you know you need your images, you need your media to be very performant, right? So when you're serving these high quality images, if you're not giving any compression. That's going to negatively affect um, how your web page, vi- your, co- your core web vitals, right? It's going to make your your user experience go down simply because your page is taking longer to load, your images are taking longer to load. So you really need to try to maximize that intersection of quality and optimization because that's really going to help that give that user a great perspective of your brand. But it's also, as you would see on on many uh, studies, if you just go to Google's Web Dev blog. You'll see there's there's no shortage of, of studies that show that a faster, more performant website is likely to convert. But we also know that higher quality images can prevent what we talked about, that 30% of returns or 27% of people abandoning their carts. So it's really a fine line between uh, maximizing quality and speed. Yeah, definitely. And that's, you know, that the 30% returns thing. So, you know, again, from the same yeah. research, it's... We talked about conversion and then, you know, cart abandonment. This is, you know, after after the sale has ever happened, you know, 30% responded and said they've returned products because the products didn't match what they saw on the, on the website. So, you know, th- this is prevalent throughout and, and it's, you know, even just getting past the conversion is, is not enough, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just really about, um, it's, it's, it's a fine line, right? It's just really trying to maximize everything, which is, it's no easy task, right? But there are, you know, there are ways to, you know, I think there are ways to do that, to handle that through proper usage of tools, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what brands need to do to deliver results by enhancing their imagery. And so, you know, you've, you touched on this a little bit and, as we were talking already, but, you know, just to dive a little deeper in this, what type of image capabilities and platform capabilities do brands need to enhance, um, need to have to enhance their e-commerce experience in, in some of the ways we've been discussing? Yeah. I mean, I think again, just to not, not to continue to, 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 to push it, but obviously the table stakes are the ability to deliver the best format and quality that are based on, on the device, right? So not everybody's, um, not everyone's going to be viewing your your store with the same device of the same browser. So you want to be able to take advantage of what those browsers can do. So typically, if you if you think of Chrome, it can handle um, an AVIF format. So you might want to be able to automatically deliver an AVIF if someone's on on a browser that can handle it. That's going to give you maximum compression and high fidelity. And if you can do that programmatically and be able to be able to detect the browser and deliver the right format and quality automatically like Cloudinary can do, then I think that's 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 going to be a major win. Also, if you're talking about video, particularly in an e-commerce setting where you may have these um, short form videos, maybe a small looping video that's showing um, you know, a quick shot of a product, you need those to do, especially if you're doing progressive download, you need those to be in the optimal format too. If you're talking about WebM versus MPEG-4, there's going to be a lot of compression um, and quality benefits you're going to get from that, right? So you're going to be able to download these videos faster, have them play faster. And again, that's something that 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 Cloudinary can do with our with automatic detection of devices and automatic format delivery. But it goes beyond that. Optimization is really just one business driver. Customization, personalization, very critical. You know, I think there was a study by McKinsey that said 78% uh, of consumers are more likely to make a repeat purchase from a company that personalizes. You know, platforms like Cloudinary, typically we're kind of that customization level. So we can take your personalization data and you can use our platform, our APIs to essentially create these personalized experiences, personalized images. For example, maybe creating an, an image target ad with some text overlays that are localized in, in a user's language or even can maybe talk to uh, a user's location 
and you know you can also use it to to build these personalized experiences having a set of media that you can deliver programmatically and automatically based upon based upon you know the user profile that you may have and then of course there's things like user generated content you want to be able to ensure that what a user is uploading is is not only safe to use but also sort of normalized into the right size and format and also also optimize, right? Maybe what they're uploading is not the best quality, but you can use some tools that can maybe ensure that it is. So I think there's there's a number of things that we can do from an e-commerce perspective, companies like Cloudinary, platforms like Cloudinary, that are really going to make really going to make uh, the user experience shine for uh, and do it at scale with programmatic interfaces. Before we continue, I'd like to introduce you to a sponsor of the show, Partner Hero. Customer service outsourcing has long been available mainly to large enterprise businesses with long-term contracts and onerous procurement processes. Partner Hero is challenging business as usual and bringing the benefits of outsourcing to small and medium businesses as well as startups. With short, flexible contracts and fast ramp-up times, Partner Hero is making customer support outsourcing a viable option for small and medium businesses and startups. It's perfect for companies with seasonality expecting a temporary spike in volume or that simply need to scale up. And their focus on quality means your customers will get an experience that feels like it comes from your team. If you're ready to bring in outside customer support help for your company that feels like it's part of your existing team, check out Partner Hero. Head on over to partnerhero.com slash agile, that's partnerhero.com slash A-G-I-L-E, to book a free consultation with their solutions team. Mention you heard about Partner Hero from the Agile brand and the way of the setup fee. Now let's get back to the show. So what about the, uh, from the content creator standpoint, so, you know, those, those marketing teams, those content teams, you know, what about the, the workflow that they need to go through to create content that can be personalized? And, Mm -hmm. you know, you talked a bit about the, the scale after the content's created to personalize and, and distribute, but you know, what, what about workflow from, from the content creation standpoint? Yeah, I mean, it's so there's with things like transformations, uh, image and video transformations, you know, you upload the origin, you get the original file, and then you can create on the fly various renditions of it. You know, you can automatically crop it. If you need to take an image that's a certain size and, you know, create maybe thumbnails out of it or gallery images out of it. The workflow is is highly optimized because you can do that at scale automatically using um, you know programmatic you know tools like crop to this width, but also with more advanced features like uh, you know image detection things like that, you can actually ensure that the focal point is going to be uh, the most compelling part of that image. And you know there are some pretty advanced use cases that we that we see at Cloudinary, for example. One of our, our customers, Minted, will use us to essentially create these, you know, if you, if you, if you think about the type of company that Minted is, they sell things like, like paintings and, and, and posters, things like that, things that you, can, that you can customize before you check out. So you can go in and you can, you know, decide the, the size, the, the type of frame, things like that. And typically what would happen uh, if you were doing that, say, 10, 15 years ago, you would need to create all of these image sprites for everything, right? And it would take you forever and you'd have millions and millions and millions of assets that is every essentially conform to every possible selection across the inventory. But with, with Cloudinary and our customization uh, tools, you can actually enhance that workflow to take sort of a master image and then create uh, overlays and things like that that are, that are creating these, these near perfect renditions of what you're going to get but you're really using layers and things like that to to swap out the frame to do things that you know would typically require having individual product shots that just is not going to happen at scale it's going to increase your storage costs so the, there are a massive workflow benefits there simply by the ability to, to customize on the fly things like that yeah yeah and so kind of to that talk about scale you know, we've, we've talked about it from, from a few different aspects, but I definitely, you know, I want to last topic I want to touch on today is AI, you know, it's, it's 2023. Mm -hmm. So we have to talk about AI um, in every show. So, um, and, you know, more specifically, you know, generative AI and, and how it can be used to, to what we're talking about in the, in the e-commerce process. So 
I know there's a lot of things not only in the works, there's a lot of things, you know, there, there are some features currently available. So I know, you know, some, some of what we're going to talk about is in progress. Some of it is currently available, but, you know, yep. I want to want to talk about the possibilities here. And so, you know, one, one of the key areas where generative AI can play a role in enhancing e-commerce is by streamlining and reducing the workload kind of to, to our previous point, um, yeah. you know, the, the workload required to support the creation of personalized images. Can you talk a little bit about this? I know, I know we just talked about it in general, but you know, what, what does AI add to this conversation? Yeah, well, I think, you know, like you had mentioned, it's really just, we're, we're kind of at the dawn of this, right? I think there's, you know, yeah. it's similar to if you can remember, if you're old enough, like I am to remember when, you know, the internet first started coming around and, you know, everyone just started getting online with America online and, and prodigy and things like that. And the, you, yeah. you there were all these these promises that were there and they, and, you know, I think we're, we're sort of at that step now with generative AI, we're just really scratching the surface. But I think in general, where we're at today, um, you know, if we're talking about enhancing workflows, you know, it really allows production teams to work faster. Um, that's to me, the core promise. It has a capability, capability to do things uh, with images that would either require some really fine tuned skill um, in image editing that very few people possess, you know, talking about the real technical, um, you know, production artists who are going yeah. in and recoloring images or removing objects at, in a seamless way in creating, you know, maybe extending an image, doing some outpainting, some, some clone stamp type tool work, which is extremely hard if you've ever tried to do it. And generative AI is actually able to, to start to do this. Um, and, you know, you've probably all seen the out, the outpainting examples but it's really just taking these like very difficult skills and, and almost magically being able to do it and you know if you know we're talking about again we're talking about tools that are rapidly improving so even if you know they're not able today to get it to 100 percent in every single instance it still is able to get it a good percentage of the way there so production teams can kind of take that on and it really does help lighten the load i think additionally being able to create new images from originals to serve uh, the needs of customization, like we talked about, is key. It really eliminates the need for expensive reshoots, et cetera. And what I'm talking about there is when we talk about recoloring, right? Say you have a shot of a product, but you don't have variant shots for everything. You know, typically that would create that would require. Uh, say you have a, a simple example might be a pair of shoes that you need to recolor into. You know, from black leather to brown leather. Very difficult, um, unless you are a very skilled production artist, but, you know, we're able to create, you know, with generative AI and recoloring, able to create these variants at scale. And also, you know, just to d dive a little deeper into some specifics, you know, you can create images that are really relevant to, to users, creating, um, you know, based upon demographics, for example, being able to change the background of an image uh, in an ad or something. And it's just the, it's really just the ability to create things like helpful images, Images that are going to help people see, really helping to people to experience the products like they maybe haven't done before, like be able to take a background image and, and recolor it, and maybe a paint color, perhaps placing a couch inside uh, a photo of your living room, being able to do things like that. And again, we talk about UGC, being able to upload images, et cetera, um, you know, being able to moderate those images. And again, being able to restore them generatively as opposed to just applying certain filters. So there's a, there's a lot of, of potential there in, in these specific use cases that we talked about, but also I think in general, uh, just to recap in general, just helping people do things at scale that typically was only reserved for experts. And again, if not getting 100% of the way there, getting it 80% of the way there so you can kind of take it on um, and lighten the load. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as someone who um, I, you know, cut my teeth on early editions of Photoshop, so, you know, pre pre layer uh, Photoshop, and when they yeah, only had one one level of undo, you know, and stuff like yeah. that. So I, I can appreciate, um, you know, I, I think there's two things there. Um, you know, one is it, it kind of it democratizes who gets to, you know, be able to work with images and, and create yeah. the content. And I think that's, that's really important. It doesn't diminish the skills that more advanced people have, but it does democratize, you know, how, how we're able to create that content. And then, you know, to your other point, 
from the customer perspective, it makes them more relevant and and more meaningful because we're able to connect things in a in a very personalized way. And I I, I think that's really powerful. To to add to that, there's an accessibility component to this mm-hmm. too. So you know, in a, a in a few different ways, and whether that's you know providing captioning for images in an automated way that's that's of high quality. Uh, as well as accessibility from being findable on SEO or even an internal search engine on, on e-commerce or something. Can you talk a little bit more uh, about this and you know some of the, some of the opportunities there? Yeah, I think when we we talk a lot about what we've talked about a lot is generative image editing things like that. But I think you know when we talk about you know the promise of the large language models, right? If you think maybe of of image to text, right? You talk, you said accessibility. I, I think that's very important. Uh, technical SEO is important. So you know if you have an image or you have a set of images that need some form of taxonomy beyond just the tagging, right? Being able to contextually describe an image, which is very vital for you know SEO, but also for accessibility. That's critically important. You might have users with certain disabilities that need to these alt tags to really function on a website. And with things like large language models and the ability to understand what an image is and then actually put it into a contextual description, that's a game changer, right? Because if you don't have us, if you don't have experts, like we talked about in the last question, maybe you have a small team. It's hard to do this stuff at scale. So being able to, you know, create these alt tags uh, is is critically important for technical SEO, but also accessibility. Could even maybe go as far as to say that, you know, in the accessibility side of things, you know, could use uh, slight recoloring to help with colorblind um, accessibility. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot there, you know, that can be done with, you know, large language models, et cetera. And I think obviously one of the big things that we see um, is that one of the big promises we see, not just in e-commerce, but really across the board, is that the, the idea of like more intelligent chat, things that are going to help people use your product, going to be able to find the right things, like very, very, uh, you know, very, you know, deterministic sort of uh, search results that are that are very intelligent and, and understand exactly what someone's looking for. So there's a huge promise there. And I do think that, you know, as we get into, you know, multi-models and things like that, and these things get more sophisticated uh, in the next couple of years. It's just going to be ingrained into the user experience. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we've touched on quite a bit with with AI and and generative in in particular. Is there anything anything else we didn't touch on yet, or you know what what are you most excited about when it comes to these these possibilities of of AI? Yeah, I think you know, again, it's 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 really it feels like we're at the you know sort of a sea change in in what's happening yeah. in tech, and and you know it's going to be it's going to look a lot different in five years. But I do think you know we talk about like visual personalization. You know, we we talk about a lot. We have a, we have one of our AI features is generative replace, extremely powerful. It's able to switch out, you know, if we we have a model right who's wearing a sweatshirt, we can say, can we change that model to wear a suit coat? happens it happens pretty seamlessly the results are great but it's a it's a suit coat that's it's sort of like a generic suit coat it does serve the purpose of changing the look of the model but what about being able to oh you know in 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 the midterm in the middle like sort of middle term being able to introduce a product a set of products right and being able to actually use that as your output so that's a sort of uh, i think the sort of uh personalization brands are going to get being able to tailor a look and feel using very specific models. So I think it's, it's going to be very, uh, you're going to see a lot of great personalization, a lot of like things around maybe personal shoppers that are AI chatbots. Um, and again, this is all hinging on these continued enhancements that, you know, that are going to happen. Uh, just all the movement that's happening in this, in this industry, um, it's going to start to happen pretty quickly, I think. And, and you're really going to see this start to be ingrained in the sh- buyer's experience. And, you know, I think you're just going to see things you know outside of ai you might start to see things like you know really powerful augmented reality tools like maybe something that's a combination of of 3d ar and ai where you're able to essentially render a what looks like your living room with the products inside so that might be a little further down the road but i still think that's something that's coming because that's another technology that's improving rapidly is is the ar space 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Paul, thanks so much for joining. Um, one last question before we wrap up here. So you've given a lot of great advice already. We've covered a lot of ground here, but uh, you know, what's what's one next best action that you'd recommend for those that are listening that you know they know they need to improve their e-commerce experience and it, most likely their their imagery? What, what's what's one thing they should do? Yeah, I mean, I think they they need to you know, if they, they need to really embrace, uh, utilizing images and videos, um, on their, on their stores and their websites, I think they should definitely check out Cloudinary because we have a full suite of products are and features that are going to be able to get you really get you going quickly in terms of that optimization, getting the, the highest quality images for the proper device that a user is using. So we can do that all at scale. Um, so I, I would say, Best thing you can do is really look into optim to start is look into optimization and just you know really start to to try and get more image and video uh, in your e-commerce uh, experience. Great, great, love it. Well, again, I'd like to thank Paul Thompson, head of technical marketing at Cloudinary, for joining the show. You can learn more about Paul and Cloudinary by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkillstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.